Hello, in this part we will focus on counting semaphores within FreeRTOS and CMC's OS version 2 layer. I'm starting uh, with STM32Cube IDE. You can use as well STM32Cube MX and your selected toolchain for this exercise. We will do it on Nucleo l 476 g board, but again, you can let's say select any other STM32 based hardware and uh, with some small modifications, you can use it freely. Okay, I'm starting the new project. So file new STM32 project. I'm selecting my microcontroller. So L476RG. I click next. Name of my project would be 6 underscore SEM underscore CNT. Finish. Okay, finally we can see our pinout. So what we would need for this exercise. The first thing would be the button. So PC13, again, we are selecting a GPIO external interrupt 13. We will not use any label. And then within system core and sys, we will select debug interface trace asynchronous SW to have a single wire output additionally, to have single wire tracing. Then time-based source, this is for HAL library. Uh, we will use timer six instead of timer uh, in Cystic. Cystic is used for free RTOS and it should not be shared with other roles within our application. Then the next point is within middleware and uh, we are selecting free RTOS. It's interface CMC's Vito. Then within config parameters, we need to check whether the counting semaphores are enabled. So we can see it's enabled. We can continue in this case. So we go to tasks and queues and uh, we will rename uh, the existing uh, default task by double click on its name. We will rename it to task uh, one. Task one was priority normal, 256 words. Start task one, uh, one century function. We would need, uh, let's say, two more tasks within this exercise. So the second one would be task two. Priority the same, normal. Uh, 256, start task two as an entry function. And again, the third task. So it will be task three, the same priority. So priority normal. 256 words as, uh, as tag size and start task three as um, entry function name. Then we need to create a counting semaphore. So for this, we switch to timers and semaphores. And within the counting semaphores, I click add. I keep, uh, let's say, default name. The count we keep default to. Press OK. This is, uh, this are, let's say, the mo all the modifications at the moment. We can see that most probably we've got not enough uh, memory allocated for the heap. Let's have a look on this free RTOS heap usage. Yes. So within config parameters, uh, we will extend this 3000 bytes to 4000. Four kilobytes to be sure that everything will fit into our mm, dedicated heap for free RTS. Okay, next point, uh, last one would be uh, checking of uh, interrupts. So I come back to this to this NVIC and I need to enable external interrupt handler. Yes, and I need to modify the preemption library. Preemption priority. Pre uh, priority should be within let's say borders specified within FreeRTOS configuration. So let me come back to FreeRTOS settings and the uh, config parameters. And at the bottom we can see library max syscall interrupt priority set to five. So all of the interrupts with the priority between five and 15 can execute uh, operating system functions. All other interrupts uh, with priority zero, one, two, three, and four shouldn't because it can, let's say, cause uh, an issue with uh, proper um, operations on the operating system. This is why we will specify our external interrupt priority on 5.
it can be 5 to 15, any number of those. We will specify 5. And now we are ready to generate the code. So I click icon to generate the code. And I can open my, uh, my main.c file. OK, let's continue with code modification. So now we are within main.c file. If I scroll down, I can see the definitions of my operating system objects, so three tasks and our counting semaphore. Then if I go a bit below, after the initialization of the kernel, I can see the creation of this counting semaphore. You remember that uh, the max count of uh, the semaphore has been set to 2, so this is the first argument. The second argument is, a, let's say, initial a number of available tokens within the semaphore. In my case, I would like to start from 0, so semaphore would be not uh, available at the beginning. This is why I clear it. And then the attributes uh, are specified by us uh, by the name of the semaphore. The rest of the attribute fields will be filled after this function execution. So it will be the pointer to the memory structure which contains the information about this uh, semaphore. Let's uh, go below. We will start with a definition of uh, our task action function, which would be used to say send information from the tasks and the interrupts to the console. We will use ITM interface, instrumentation trace, macro cell. But you can use, of course, uh, for example, USART for this. There is one argument, but no return value. And uh, it is using ITM interface, uh, which doesn't require any configuration. The only required thing is to configure this SWO as additional line during debug uh, selection. Uh, so I would just send one character, which would be sent by the tasks and interrupts. And after this, I would sign, let's say, the new line sign and character. After this, uh, there is a time to put uh, some code into the tasks uh, entry functions. We'll start from task one. The role of task one would be to release uh, the semaphore. We will release the semaphore within this uh, function. So it will be release. Now semaphore id, this is this counting semaphore, and no other arguments. So it will try to release the semaphore. In case of any trouble, it will return error value, which is uh, negative. But there would be no timeout. So it is, let's say, trying to release this semaphore. And in case of any, any trouble, it is immediately going to the next uh, line. In our case, this next line would be task action, so sign of life. And uh, as it is task one, we will Let's just send one over ITM and then we will send this task for two seconds into the blocked state. This is the code for task one. What is the role of task two? The role of task two would be very similar to the role of task one. So we will try to not to release uh, the semaphore, but the difference would be that uh, the number we would like to send during this sign of life would be two. Task three will be different. Within task 3, we would like to wait for two occurrences of the semaphore and how we can do it. We've got, uh, of course, the sema, uh, let's say the dedicated function semaphore acquire, counting semaphore, and this time we've got the timeout, so I would use quite long one for seconds. And uh, here is the first maybe, let me say this way, limitation of, let's say, the sem counting semaphore acquiring. There is no function which is, uh, let's say, trying to acquire the semaphore more than once. In case you would like to acquire the same semaphore twice or more times, or you would like, you are waiting for more than one semaphore, you need to specify those acquire functions one by one. And there is a problem, determinism problem, because sometimes you, you are not sure in which order the semaphores will, let's say, pop up. Just an example. If you would wait for semaphore 2, and uh, let's say the first one would be, you will wait for semaphore 1 and 2, and first one would be semaphore 2, you will be still blocked, and you will, cannot be, let's say, unblocked uh, till, let's say, the first one would be uh, given. So, uh, in case you would like to wait for multiple events, uh, so from different tasks, like in this case, there are better mechanisms, so which we will touch a bit later on, like event flags or event threats. So you can have a look uh, in next parts of this of this training.
Okay, so uh, coming back to our topic, the last action I would like to specify within this task would be sending the sign of life. Okay, and uh, what we would add here as well is uh, releasing the semaphore from the interrupt. So to do this, I go to core source interrupt files, so this one, l4 underscore it dot c, and here uh, within external interrupts, I will go to the definition, not the declaration, sorry, uh, but I'll come back, not this one, sorry, this one. And I will use this callback. This callback is defined as weak within hal underscore gpio.c file. So once uh, the interrupt is coming, it is there is automatic clearance of the flag within this line. And then there is a callback, a call to callback, which is empty function. As it is weak, I can overwrite it within my code. And uh, during the compilation, my version would be taken into consideration. So I'm doing this. And uh, here I will start with, uh, let's say, sign of life. Uh, so it will be exclamation mark. And then I would release the semaphore. Oh, semaphore release. Okay, and that's it. We are done with the coding. I'll try to, to build it. And the next point uh, would be, let's say, the debug session. So let's wait for the compilation. Okay, no errors, no warning. We can start a debug session. I start a debug session. Um, I will check with the debugger and I will enable the serial wire viewer. I would limit the clock to four megahertz, which is used in my system and, and then apply and uh, okay. Single wire viewer is used uh, as it is ITM interface. So instrumentation tries macro so. And uh, for this, we are using this uh, single wire output, this third pin with an uh, SWD interface. It is very good because it's, it allows us to quite easily send uh, data from the code over this line with uh, system clock speed. So in our case, uh, synchronous uh, four megahertz. So it's quite, quite fast and efficient. To display it, uh, we need a single wire viewer ITM data console. Uh, in my case, it is already enabled as I'm using it for different projects. Uh, in case you cannot see it uh, within quick access, please just uh, select SWV and select this line with the monitor icon. Once you will do it, you need to configure it like myself and enable this line number zero. This is SWO interface uh, line. Once done it, you need to start it. This icon, start trace and you can run the application. You can see one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. And if I press the button right now, I press, I press, I press. We can see that I would pause it for analyze. We can see that once I press the button and then task one and task two has been executed, task three is ex executed again because the semaphore has been released. As you can see, once I press, uh, let's say, the button a bit more frequently, task three was able to execute more frequently as well, because it was possible to do this task to take two counting semaphores uh, without waiting for both of the tasks. Okay, we can end this session on this on this point. So thank you for watching this video.